exactly how your cardiorespiratory system is going to respond to exercising at altitude is going to vary a little bit based on how long you've been there. And we also need to separate out submaximal versus maximal exercise because there's there are some differences there. So here, let's talk about um, the first six to ten days, and then after six to ten days, when you get a little bit of uh, acclimation. Um, and we're specifically here talking about submaximal exercise. And really what's unique about submaximal versus maximal exercise or what's different about them is that submaximal exercise levels, you can compensate with different uh, physiological functions. So if some things can increase in order to compensate for what other physiological functions are not doing as well. Uh, maximal exercise, everything's working at their, uh, their physiological ceiling. They can't go any harder, faster, or higher. And so there's no compensation that can happen. All right, so first six to 10, first six to 10 days, submaximal exercise. You're, you're going to get an increase in your cardiac output at a match submaximal exercise level. This is going to be driven by a dramatically increased heart rate. So if you look at the graph over here, we have heartbeats per minutes on the y-axis, and we have exercise intensity as a percentage of maximal sea level ability on the x-axis. We have a sea level line, and we have a higher altitude line. And you can see that at every exercise intensity, the out higher altitude line has a higher heart rate. Okay, So again, dramatically higher heart rates, with submaximal exercise um, uh, at altitude. This is going to be um, combined though with a decrease in stroke volume at this same exercise intensity. All right, so what exactly is going on? The um, greater cardiac output is going to be something that we need in order to compensate for the lower oxygen uh, concentration within the bloodstream because you're at altitude. This is the primary problem with exercise at altitude. Your stroke volume is going to be lower because your plasma volume is decreased. Right? So we've talked about this in a previous video. Uh, you can see the links below to find that. Um, plasma volume is going to decrease when you go up to altitude, uh, especially initially, um, and it's going to help to concentrate those red blood cells and hemoglobin, but it's still going to have a negative effect on stroke volume. The dramatically increased heart rate, though, which is going to drive that increase in cardiac output, is going to be because we have a large increase in sympathetic activity, which is what generally raises heart rates. Um, so this is going to be a short-term adaptation that we do, this dramatic increase in sympathetic activity and heart rate in order to raise that cardiac output, um, because it's not something our body really wants to do because it's going to decrease exercise efficiency, especially of the, the heart itself. After six to 10 days, we're going to get a, a slight increase in the AVO2 difference, so the arterial venous oxygen difference. So this is how much oxygen we're extracting out of the blood. So in other words, we get an increase in oxygen extraction from the blood, and this is gonna decrease the demand on that cardiac output, which allows sympathetic activity to go down a little bit, allowing heart rate to go down a little bit, and cardiac output to go down a little bit. It still probably won't go down as much as what it was at sea level unless you're at very low levels of altitude, um, but it's going to approach that. All right, let's talk now about what's happening with your pulmonary ventilation, so how much you're breathing in and out um, at a, so during submaximal exercise at altitude. So what we're seeing on this graph over here is uh, oxygen consumption on the x-axis, so essentially exercise intensity, aerobic exercise intensity going up and we have pulmonary ventilation on the y-axis. So as exercise intensity goes up, so does your ventilation. So this is your sea level line, but this is your altitude line. So this is about uh, a little under 6,000 meters of altitude. So much greater increase in ventilation at every exercise intensity level at altitude compared to sea level. All right, this is going to be comp a compensatory mechanism. Remember, we can compensate submaximally. We cannot compensate with maximum exercise. This is going to be a compensatory mechanism because of the lower number of oxygen molecules per volume of air. We have the same percentage of oxygen, so it's still tw about 21% oxygen in the air around us, but the density of the gas molecules in the air, including the oxygen, is just going to be less, so they're going to be more spread out. So per volume, so per lung filled lung volume, essentially, you're getting less oxygen in your lungs. All right, this video is all about what's happening with submaximal exercise. I'm going to have another video that I'll link to below uh, on what happens with maximal exercise. So remember, you cannot compensate during maximal exercise the way you can with some maximal exercise. So things are going to be a little bit different.